girl, how you doing? Yeah, I'm on this bike. <laughs> Trying to get my little exercise on before these kids show up, girl. Yeah. Woo. This is making me tired. But anyway, what's going on, girl? You look cute. Yes, sis. Yes. I see you doing it. Boom for Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Girl, my nerves are so bad. Oh. Well, my cousin has been staying at my house. And I think it's time for them to go. Mm. But I don't know how to. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get around to saying it, okay? I know you lying. Nope. Okay. Well, he sound kind of grown. 30. Did he finish high school? Nope. Okay. Did he go to college? Nope. Not that that matters, but it just depends on your marketability and the things that you can strive for. Okay. So, no, uh huh. Mm hmm. Well, does he have a job? Nope. Okay, so is he looking for a job? Nope. Oh. When you get home from work after working all day, do you come home and your house is clean? Mm mm. Cause you know a cleaner lady who did it, that costs money. <laughs> yep, I come home. He done cooked, left the dishes, ate my leftovers I plan to take for lunch. Oh, so he on a sofa. And dishes in the sink. Because but when you left, were the dishes in the sink before you left for work? Nope. Does he help me with the kids? Doesn't help out with the kids. No, no. <sighs> all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Will he run errands for you? No car. Doesn't run errands. Oh, we don't got no car. Mm -hmm. Does he help with groceries? Does he have savings? Does he have anything? Mm -mm. Does he have a plan? Does he have an exit plan? Have y'all discussed this? Uh, we talked about a plan, but a plan with no execution is just a dream. Maybe he says those things just to make me feel better. You know, but you know, when you have family, you want to help your family, you know. It's like an obligation because it's blood. The one thing people don't understand is that just because you're related by blood does not mean you should be obligated to those people because blood will take advantage of you. Friends will take advantage of you, but no one can take advantage of you unless you allow them to take advantage of you. When are you gonna stand up for yourself? When are you gonna put you first? Can't save everybody, whether they're blood or not. Well, girl, looks like you got you another teenager <laughs> living with you. No, 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 no. It's not funny, it's not funny. But he's 30 years old. No job, no plan, not much of an education. So you're limited. Sometimes you're limited on the things that you can do when your education is limited. What you're doing is harboring a fugitive. No, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing, girl. No, what you're doing is you taking care of a grown man trapped in a uh, teenager's world. And what happens if you continue to allow him to I hate to say this word, but to freeload off of you. How's the saying go? Why buy the milk? We, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? Something like that. I can never get that one right. The saying goes, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? <laughs> you drink it up all my milk, child. <laughs> Does he bring people over to your house when you at work? Mm -hmm. I, that would be another concern for me. You're enabling him. A grown man, and don't get me wrong, I know he's family, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that people can be down on their luck. That's okay. That's normal. But you're right. You ain't got no job. 
You ain't looking for a job. You ain't trying to help around the house. They're not making your life easier. So how is all this situation benefiting you? Any, now I can see if he helping with the kids, you took the kids out of daycare, your house is spotless. You know, he's running your errands. He's helping you out. Baby, how long you need to stay? <laughs> Because, you know, that is a big house. You come home, the food is cooked. So it's like you're earning your keep. It would be a huge help. You don't have the daycare bill. You don't have to clean. And you're tired when you get home. That, I'm like, hey, hey, let, let me build another wing on the house. It's just like having a little nanny. But, baby, you're not getting any of that. You got the tenant. That's draining you. But if you keep giving, 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 they're never going to do anything for themselves. So what you're doing, you're enabling them to do nothing. <laughs> Baby. Uh-uh, girl, let me tell you. Sometimes you have to do tough love. You have to practice tough love. Let me tell you, it was the hardest thing. And a lot of people don't agree. They don't agree. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But it was the hardest thing having to kick my son out. I gave him... Six months after he graduated from high school because that was not negotiable. We was going to get him through school. Well, I was. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't easy, but he made it through school. And I said, I give you six months, you know, whatever. Not to get out, but to do your thing because he graduated. He was 17. And so I was like, you, six months, do your gaming, see if you can blow up, blah, blah, blah. Six months may not be a lot, but I'm like, okay, after six months... Okay, so can you get a, like a part-time job? Can you do something? You know, I come home. He in the same spot where I left him. It was making my nerves bad. I was like, N uh, I don't think so. And I grew up with men. No job, no education, didn't clean up. Wasn't looking for a job, always looking for a hustle. And trying to get that, that quick money. And honestly, I never understood what my while my mama stayed. After a year, maybe a year and a half, I couldn't take it. And who wants a man who doesn't work, who doesn't help out, who can't build you something? You know, <laughs> they're good for one thing, but baby, <laughs> you gotta get your mind right, cause that's not the only thing that counts. So, I had to let him go. And boy, it broke my heart to tell my son to leave. He was 18, not doing anything, no go. But deep down, he has a plethora of friends, and I knew he would be okay. But he had to feel the burn of reality because I couldn't continue to baby him. I'd be preparing a man for a woman, and he can't do nothing. So I was like, you, you got to go. You got to go. You're not trying to help. You're not trying to help yourself. And by allowing you to stay here to do nothing, I'm crippling you. So you got to go. And it was starting to make my heart hurt. It was stressing me out, blah, blah, blah. So he had to go. Sorry. Goodbye. Good night, Blue Cheese. And um, his friend picked him up. He went with his friends. Thank God that tough love worked. Because now, almost two years, He's enrolled in college. He has a job. He's saving, still saving for a car. Now, if I was to get some extra money, you know, I would give him a car. He's been doing great. But that tough love was the key for his growth. And if you continue to enable him, he will never grow. He's always going to be comfortable because he doesn't have to do anything because you're providing everything. And that's a grown man. I definitely don't believe in taking care of grown men. Mm-mm, mm-mm, I don't think so. And you ain't doing nothing to help? Baby, goodbye. Goodbye, don't feel bad. And then I feel like people feel like they're obligated just because somebody's family. Mm -mm, that, that was my son, my firstborn boy. It hurt my heart, but I was like, <laughs> He's not even trying for himself. And the more I give, I give, I give, and shelter, and this, mm -mm, it wasn't helping, it was hurting him. You're hurting your cousin. Mm-mm, gotta go. I don't know, girl. I don't wanna talk about it anymore. It's just making me so upset, but you gave me some great advice. And I 
think it's time to make a change. Because you're right, if I continue to allow him to stay, I'm just hurting mm -hmm. him. Why go out and do for yourself when you can get it for free? You don't have to do nothing. Wake up, my sister. I know you feel as though you want to help family, blah, blah, blah. But family will never help themselves if you continue to <sighs> coddle them. But I do understand people get down on their luck and blah, blah, blah. I get that. But a year? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. And I remember I was down on my luck. You know, your family, you know, give me a few dollars and stuff like that. Thank you. I'm like, I can't pay this. I'll tell them right away. I can't pay this back. So, uh-uh. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I, I can't pay it back. <laughs> you know, but I was always hustling and my situation was temporary. You know, I had my degree behind me, so I was marketable. I had a plan, I was working towards something. So it wasn't like I was just sitting around doing nothing. Nope, I had a plan, I had an exit strategy, X, Y, and Z. So that's different. You know, you try and you follow, okay, just give me a month, let me get this job, I'm going, interviews, I'm trying, can you help me with my resume? That's totally different, that's different. And you have that goal that you're working towards, but you sitting around, you ain't doing nothing? Oh no, baby, you got to go. Okay, have his stuff packed up at the door. Give him a little gas money. Goodbye, you go sleep in your car. Another person told me that they did that to their child, the girlfriend, and the baby. Get out. Mm -hmm. And then you want to talk schmack to me? You want to talk schmack? Oh, heck no. Goodbye. I don't tolerate schmack from a kid. I'm definitely not going to tolerate schmack from an adult. Mm -mm. Girl, wake up, honey. Mm -mm. You want me to come over to your house tonight and help you pack his stuff? You leave it right at the front door. And I guarantee you, six months from now, he's going to be getting himself together. But sometimes you got to be at the lowest point. You got to be at the bottom before you can come back up to the top. And that's when you appreciate the things you have because you worked hard for those things. You struggled and you survived the worst of the worst. And baby, that's what makes a great story too. So, do you want to keep enabling or you want to help? You open, leave that door open and let him walk through it. And baby, six months, I'ma check back in baby. I'm telling you, he'll find a way then. He will find a way. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. That's why you telling me this. Because it, you're irritated. Alright. Let me go put my cow away. Alright girl, get your bag. Let's go to lunch. You know we don't got much time. I love you girl for talking to me. Sometimes you just need to hear from somebody else. Makes you feel better. I'm going to work on a plan. I'm just not going to kick him out. I'll give him a couple of weeks and tell him what the plan is. And I'm going to stick to the plan. And if that doesn't work, you come on over and help me pack his bags. Come on, girl. Let's go to lunch. <sighs> What's up, Bass Bass? It's your girl, Joy. Back with another little clip. I heard a story on a radio and I thought about, you know, Clinton and the situation with him. And the story that I heard on the radio of a lady with her cousin who's been at the house for a while. He owes her two thousand dollars and blah 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 she wants to know what she, if she should kick him out but when you are grown especially grown not 18 grown but grown in your 30s if you don't have a plan you're not working towards anything and you're not helping out then you gotta go because the longer you allow that person to stay there what are they gonna do to help themselves this is how the saying go you feed a man a fish he'll eat for a day you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. But as long as you keep feeding him, feeding him, feeding him, there's no reason for him to go out to learn how to feed himself. So there's no motivation there <laughs> because it's being handed to him with no plan. And it, trust me, if you allow somebody to sit on your couch and not do anything and you don't say anything, that's just what they're going to do. They're not motivated to do anything extra. So sometimes even with these kids, you gotta cut you gotta cut the strings. You gotta cut the strings and let them learn. Even with students, parents don't wanna allow their students to feel the burn. The student knows whether or not they should be doing assignments or not. They know that. 
but they choose not to do anything. The parent is not on them or the parent wants to save them when the grades come through. Stop making excuses for these children. That's hurting them. It's not helping them. You know, let them live up to uh, their responsibilities and their consequences. Let them deal with that. Oh no, parents, not all, not all. They want to save these kids. Uh, just because somebody's family, you want to save everybody in your family. What you're doing, you're burning yourself out and getting frustrated. And that's how I was getting with my son after about a year, year and a half. I couldn't take it anymore. I could feel the anxiety, the stress. It was bothering me. I go to work. I come back home still in the same spot. Dishes in the sink. Want to eat my shrimp from my mukbangs? Uh, I don't think so. Did you buy it? Uh, no. So, mm-mm. Mm -mm. Sometimes you got to cut the ties and let it go and put yourself first. Put your needs first. And family is always going to be family, but that doesn't mean you are obligated to that family member. Especially if they're not helping you in any kind of way. Now, baby, like I said before, if they're like a nanny in the house and they're making your life easier, okay. Let's, build, let's look at the floor plans, build another wing, honey. Yes. Because let me tell you, daycare is expensive. I remember when I had all of my kids in daycare, honey, that was $1,300 a month. You think if I had a family member that could take away that bill, help them with the homework, do a little study, do little activities, run their little errands, take them to the library, take them to the little, little McDonald's play area, take them to museums, run, run my clothes to the cleaners, clean up, mop, sweep, scrub, dust. Baby, you can stay as long as you want. That's being a helper. That's earning your keep. But you sitting there, you ain't doing nothing. You like a lamp collecting dust. Oh, hells to the nose. Next caller, good night, blue cheese. There's the door and there are your bags. Bye. Bye. If you ain't trying to help you or you're not trying to help me, good night. Now, I can see, like I said before, you fall on hard times. I got you. Here's a few dollars. You don't got to pay me back. Here's a few dollars. And thank you guys for always sticking by me, watching my little videos. You know, you know, because my videos are worldwide. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to get out of here. Give this video a thumbs up or not, because you're going to do what you want to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye y'all.